Robert Hoagland, who has been missing since the summer of 2013, was found dead Monday in a home near the Catskill Mountains in New York. He had been living under the name Richard King, but investigators found paperwork identifying him as Robert Hoagland. His death answers some questions, but many others remain, like why would he leave his family, and so much more. everybody and welcome to the true crime squad this is katie weaver i'm here with my sister co-host and partner in crime christy brower hello hello hey everybody how's it going you know it's going pretty well as as well as can be expected i uh i had to go look in the mirror and check if i had green teeth and a green tongue because <laughs> we decorated christmas cookies yesterday and i had a gingerbread cookie with green icing on it uh huh. Holy mother of pigment! Wow. Yes. You know, like when little kids eat blue frosting and they get the blue teeth. And yeah, I had that only green. <laughs> we'll take care of that before we decided to record the show because I was, didn't really want that on the video. Probably good. We we did yesterday have our big cookie day event that we have every year. We did. Which is where we basically uh gather together with our sister and some of our kids and friends and basically make a Christmas cookie and candies until we can't stand it anymore. Mm -hmm. It was awesome to give it away to because we can't eat it all. That's what damn. Oh my gosh. I left mine in the car last night, my part of our loot, because Mm -hmm. I was frankly just too tired to bring it in the house. Mm -hmm. Uh, So Mm -hmm. I brought it in this afternoon and it was so heavy. My big pan of stuff that I put a rib out of place. (laughs) Good Lord. So um, watch out, well, everyone but, I know. <laughs> but you have three hungry college students coming to your house in about a week. So I do. Stuff I'm just, most of it's exhausted. just going out to the garage fridge to just wait for them to get home. Because it's all their favorites, too. So. Right. Did your puppy put a rib out as well? Or? Uh, he's going to. So <laughs> he's going I'm to gonna kick them out of my office. But. Before I do that, I'm going to turn the mic over to you for our first segment, which is some creepy crime. Yes. Well, you've heard us talk about this case already. Case that is probably not a case. Lucy Studi from Iowa, a few months ago, convinced the sheriff in the county where she grew up, that her father was a very prolific serial killer and that he may have killed somewhere between 50 and 70 people. Yes. She had pretty vivid information and memories of helping bury these bodies. And well, well, women, pretty vivid descriptions of the women, the age range, some specific younger girls and their whole stories. Yeah, so she's been telling these stories most of her life. She's never really gotten anybody to believe her until now. And she did kind of get the sheriff in the county kind of curious, like, well, you know, maybe we ought to look just to be sure, because no one right. ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, it took quite a while to get some help, because this is a tiny little county. This was a very expensive um, undertaking. There's a well that she had said a lot of the bodies were in, and it was filled in, and it would need to be dug up. So finally, um, a couple weeks ago, they started digging. They dug for three days in areas that she had indicated and they found nothing. And I, I, I mean, yay, good. Glad her dad wasn't a serial killer that was out murdering people. Um, clearly concerned for her. Yeah. You know, and, and it's not to say that, like, this was a happy childhood or that there weren't a lot of problems here because there was a mm-hmm. lot of problems. Her mother and stepmother both took their lives. Her brother also took his life later on. 
And some of the step siblings in her life were like, yeah, we would be all surprised if that were the case because this was, mm-hmm. it was not a good situation. So we don't mm-hmm. know yet what all the story is here, but after no, the and they have not been able to excavate the well because excavating the well would cost like 300 K. Yeah. So that has not been done. And at this point may not get done at all since nothing no. else has turned any fruit. They were trying to look in some of the other places first, like, okay, yeah. let's see if we find something, you know, that would justify that. So mm-hmm. apparently Lucy was supposed to have a polygraph with the FBI on December 2nd because she's adamant that this is still true. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I mean, I guess we can't 100% say it isn't, but at this point, after three days of digging, we didn't find a single thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, The FBI didn't show up to that, and it was kind of a "Mm, don't call us, we'll call you kind of situation. Ah. So it appears as though this may be coming to a close. Uh, You know, I mean, there's only so much they can do if they haven't found anything. Right. They brought in some um, cadaver dogs that did indicate in Mm -hmm. the area, but, you know, there's a lot of that's not foolproof at all. It's just one step in a process of trying to t- determine if there are mm-hmm. human Particularly in old, life. yeah, old, old deaths like this. Right. And, and you know, they can also indicate on, on like animal remains and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, but the sheriff was kind of trying to at least be sure, you know, yeah. which I, which I really, I give him kudos for that because, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, if this were true and there you know, yeah. it, it's terrifying, the the, mm-hmm. the thought of it. But Lucy, either way, needs help and support. I don't feel like in mm-hmm. any way was this malicious on her part. In no. her mind, this is true. Mm-hmm. She's pretty clear about that. But mm-hmm. it does appear that the FBI has pulled back. Probably they're not going to be doing any more digging. So mm-hmm. at this point, um, we'll put this to bed unless something else changes. But at this point, he was... The serial killer who wasn't. In yeah. Iowa. Yep. Yeah. And with that, Katie, I think I will turn the time back to you for our main case. Okay. Well, this is a hell of a case. And a lot of you guys are probably familiar with this case. This was the case of uh, Robert Hoagland. Mm-hmm. Robert Hoagland, who had gone missing from Newtown, Connecticut, on July 28th, 2013. He was a local chef and a property appraiser. He worked from home for a law firm. And he had a wife and three adult kids. Mm-hmm. And there had been some pretty epic trouble with one of the kids who uh, was really suffering with drug addiction. Mm-hmm. and some guys that he had some affiliation with, maybe owed some money to, um, that he, Robert, had had a pretty brutal run-in with them uh, over some stolen laptops, and they had made some threats against him and their family, and like the, at this point, uh, unfortunately, this son was kind of making their lives very miserable, and But other than that, uh, earlier, uh, he and his wife had separated briefly and then gotten back together. And like overall, life was good. They were the happy, stable family. Now, this was in Newtown, uh, Mm -hmm. not too long after the shootings there. Mm -hmm. Uh, His wife, in fact, is a teacher. Uh, I believe that she was a culinary teacher at the high school. Mm -hmm. So there had been a lot of trauma in that community. There had been a lot of trauma just for everyone, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But his wife was on a trip. She'd been on vacation with some friends and had come home and he was supposed to be picking her up from the airport, but he never did. Mm. And she waited at the airport for a couple of hours. He never answered his phone, but apparently that wasn't uh, completely odd for him. She said that he was kind of bad for losing his phone or letting his phone go dead and not charging it. So that wasn't a huge Mm -hmm. surprise. So at first she just thought, well, maybe he got waylaid somehow, you know, Mm -hmm. but he never came. And when she got home, she discovered some strange things. His car was home. And 
she talked to a son who had borrowed the car uh, earlier that day and come home. He said that dad had been there in the morning, that he'd gone to uh, get bagels and put some gas in the car and then came home and about 11 or so said he was going to mow the lawn and was just 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 smiley self and was acting fine. Mm -hmm. The son borrowed the car and when he came back, dad wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And that was the last anyone saw him except Mm -hmm. for this brief uh, picture of him at the gas station. Mm -hmm. Well, that was when he uh, actually put gas in the car, but he uh, also bought a map of the uh, United States, Mm. which, I mean, people buy maps, but, you know. Especially in 2013. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then a day or two later, she found his phone and his wallet and his keys hidden under a doll on a chair in their bedroom. So he had vanished and left everything behind, which was just Mm -hmm. really weird. And there Mm -hmm. was a huge hunt for him. And, you know, of course, everyone, uh, their whole community was shaken up. There was a huge manhunt for him. And it was just really, really puzzling. So... Once she, uh, you know, called the police and they had reported him missing, the National Park Service was looking for him because they thought he might have gone to hike on the Appalachian Trail. Mm -hmm. So they searched there. They had distributed flyers. Of course, the media was looking everywhere. Everybody was looking in their community for him. Sure. Uh, About a week after his disappearance, he was put into the National Missing and Unidentified Person System database. Their neighbors were dumbfounded. You know, Mm -hmm. everybody was really shaken up. Like, how does this just happen? Right. Well, yeah, somebody just disappeared to thin air. Now, Lori had kind of wondered if he had left voluntarily because he did that once before. Earlier in their marriage, they lived in California and he had taken off for a short time then and then come back. Mm -hmm. So there was a kind of a wondering in her if that could have been the case. But when mm-hmm. she found the wallet and the keys and stuff, then she changed her mind and thought, no, this is not what this is. So the son. Leave all that behind if you're going on purpose. Yeah. So then there was a lot of scrutiny, especially public scrutiny on the son. That mm-hmm. he had uh, either hurt his dad or, you know, that his uh, drug affiliation and his stuff he was up to got his dad killed in some way. But there was a lot of blame put on him. Mm. Maybe caused this in some way. Mm-hmm. So <sighs> there was all kinds of look. I, the police searched his work computer and they said he had searched several times for an address in Rhode Island. But they went to that address in Rhode Island and there was absolutely no connection to him there that they could find. Mm. And... There was also an issue with his computer that he had downloaded a program that uh, he, about a month before, that allowed uh, the user to delete all records of searches and results. So they didn't have Mm -hmm. a lot of information off of his computer or his phone. There just Mm -hmm. wasn't very much to go on. So they searched the wooded areas in and around Sandy Hook. They brought in dogs. I mean, they looked in every way they could think of. There just was nothing. Then people started calling in sightings. There were sightings from Rhode Island. There were sightings from uh, New York. There were, or like upstate New York. There were sightings from Connecticut around Voluntown. Mm. But they were never really able to uh, substantiate that. Then the Los Angeles police started asking residents to be on the lookout for Robert because he had family and connections in the suburbs of LA and in Hollywood. Hmm. But nobody ever really came forward with anything Mm -hmm. uh, until later that year, about six months later, somebody in Brookfield that's just north of Newtown reported that they had seen him driving a car with New York license plates. But Mm -hmm. the security camera from the store was inconclusive. And now remember that anytime there's a missing person, 
this happens, you know, anytime there's a missing person, leads get called in, people call and they're just certain that they saw this person and, you know, right. in, it in any certain place. Yeah, it happens all the time. And so, you know, they're following up on these leads, but I don't know that anyone's, you know, taking them terribly seriously because sure. nothing's really substantiating that they're true. In 2016, Investigation Discovery had a series called Disappeared, and they did a Ooh. whole episode on Hoagland's mm -hmm. disappearance. But there was nothing. But on that episode, uh, or no, sorry, earlier in 2014, the Newtown Police uh, uh, Chief Charles Kenho said, everything is on the table. Two possibilities have emerged, that he was the victim of foul play or that he decided to walk away from his life. There is significant evidence of both possibilities and neither has emerged as more likely. Mm. Now, eventually his wife and one of the sons uh, apparently moved to Australia and one of the other sons left this, the state. His family kind of stat scattered. Uh, mm. This has been, a, you know, an incredibly hard situation for their family, a, a very sad situation for yeah. them, especially for these sons to never know what happened to their dad. And particularly for the son who got blamed. A lot of podcasts blamed him over the mm. years. A lot of podcasts have blamed him. A lot of, uh, you know, th there's just been a lot of scrutiny on him, that him or his drug activities are the cause of what happened to his dad. And it's been awful. Well, lo and behold, last week, uh, there was a 911 call in a house in New York near the Catskill Mountains, there was a man who was having a medical emergency. He was, he's 59 at this point, mm -hmm. and he died. Mm -hmm. His roommate had called 911. This was in Rock Hill, New York, on mm -hmm. uh, last Monday, so about a, a week or so ago. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in cardiac arrest. At any rate, he died. And this was in the town of Thompson. The, the autopsy results are still pending, but they're saying that they don't suspect that there's foul play. Mm -hmm. But the police could not substantiate who this person is. He was going by the name of Richard King. His roommate said he tells me his name is Richard King. Mm -hmm. So they start going through his belongings and find some papers that indicate uh, Robert Hoagland. Mm -hmm. And they're able to now substantiate that he is... Where was, indeed, Robert Hoagland. Wow. So he's been living for the last nine and a half some years in New York. Let me show you how far it is from Newtown. About an mm -hmm. hour and 23 minutes by car. Oh, wow. The dude's been an hour and a half from home the whole goddamn time. time. And his family hasn't known where he was or what to do, or what was going on. And his son has been taking the blame from the public at large. It's horrifying. And now he's died. And takes with him the story of why the hell any of this happened. I guess. I mean, does the roommate know anything? Probably not, because... Hopefully we get to learn that. I mean, the police said he died of natural causes, and that's the last they're saying about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, at this point, I don't know if we'll ever know who the roommate is or how the roommate knows him. But also, he had taken $600 from the ATM the day he disappeared, mm -hmm. which wasn't like didn't clean out their accounts or anything, but he did mm -hmm. take $600 in cash. Um, but you don't live on $600 for nine years. No. You know, to me... People like walking away from their lives and disappearing was a lot more plausible back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, maybe even early 90s. But now, mm. how? Right. How? How? With with the internet? I mean, wow. And to be that close, like he wasn't even far away. So there's so much that we don't know. Yeah. How in the world did he make money? Which mm -hmm. did make people wonder, and makes me wonder, Did was is the roommate more than a roommate? Mm -hmm. 
you know, is he the person who he escaped to, you know, escaped, mm -hmm. that's a horrible way to say it, but you know, that he fled to, is this the person who's been f supporting him financially right. for the last nine years? Because to me, the only way you fall that far off the grid and don't ever get discovered is unless you have somehow managed to obtain fake paperwork, you know, and so get a hold work. of a social security number so that you can work or you don't need to work and mm -hmm. someone is caring for you. Wow. That is wild. His poor mm -hmm. family. I just, that's so sad uh -huh. to think that they may not get answers from this. Yeah. The sons have made a couple of statements in the press, uh, basically just that uh, we're shocked. Oh, we don't know what to make of it. We're trying to make sense of this right now. Mm -hmm. That's about all they have to say. I mean, what else are they going to say? I have no idea. Yeah. And his wife. I mean, geez. Yeah. Just yeah. walk away like that? Yeah. Where he had done it before, though, it does make me wonder a little bit about his mental health and his mm -hmm. stability. Did he have kind of an alter ego that he fell into? Was Richard King a persona by chance? Right. That that he, you know, had used before, maybe? And, right. You know, the heat was on in lots of ways in his family, and maybe he just couldn't take it? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, that's just a total guess, but it does, you know, make yeah. you wonder. I mean, sometimes people who are not super stable stable in their mm -hmm. mental health, uh, you know, can walk away and just become someone else. I, yeah. Wow. Now, there had been some, uh, the, one of the big questions has been, how did he get out of town? He left mm -hmm. his car. Um, there had been rumors that there had been sightings of people seeing him walking. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, never substantiated. It's possible, I guess, that he just walked for a long ways until someone picked him up. Uh, I mm -hmm. also seriously suspect that he had a burner phone. Mm -hmm. You know, he must have had a way to communicate with somebody. You, there's no way in hell he did this all by himself. I can't right. imagine. No. Cannot imagine. Uh, one of the things he left was his high blood pressure medication. Oh. And now at 59, he has died of what looks like maybe a heart attack, mm -hmm. which I think is mildly interesting because uh, mm -hmm. has he been getting medical care? Yeah, that's a question. I mean, he could be if he's mm -hmm. so long as he's paying, you know, if you show up at the doctor's office and pay cash, you could tell him your name is Daffy Duck and they're still going to take care of you, right? you know, and so it's possible that he was just paying cash for medical and nobody mm -hmm. was, you know, any the wiser, but medical would be a little harder to get, I think, without a well, a job and, and verifiable mm -hmm. uh, identity. Mm -hmm. So that we, we also don't know, but I think it is kind of curious that uh, he did leave his blood pressure meds at home and, mm -hmm. you know, not that they would have lasted him nine years, but no, that but we know he had high him... blood pressure at 50. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That so, is a strange, strange situation. In searching his name, I found this. Mm. Richard King mm -hmm. with it looks like perhaps he uh, maybe set up a profile. Mm -hmm. There's an argument about whether or not this is truly his face or not. Why would you put your own face? But it doesn't look a whole lot off from his face. I mean, picture mm -hmm. that face with a beard and a hat mm -hmm. and this face mm -hmm. with a smile. I think it's possible. Well, here's one with a smile, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, his teeth actually line up quite well in both pictures. It makes me think this is him. Mm -hmm. um, he, he had posted from that account on September 13th in Monticello. Is there any support, shelters, food pantry, etc. for the homeless in Monticello? Hmm. Wow. That's, and that's about that's... all the activity that account ever had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah. Not necessarily a smoking gun of anything, but it is interesting. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Very, so, very strange situation. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, uh, 
entity larger than us that has the uh, abilities to will be able to contact the roommate and if they want to be named and interviewed that they'll you know be able to do that uh, mm -hmm. to answer a few more questions for his family we don't have to know but his family sure should get to know right. what the hell he's been doing for the last nine years mm -hmm. I, I kind of think uh, I think they're owed that personally I think so if there's anyone who knows they they, they should share what they know yeah yeah so there you have it. That's Robert Hoagland turned Richard King. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Well, Christy, I am going to turn the mic over to you for our last segment, which I believe is a true crime update. Yes. So we've been covering the murder of four college students in Moscow, Idaho, for several mm -hmm. And although there are really no big breaks in this case, there are some other things going on that are getting well concerning. Mm -hmm. And the police have put out a notice to um, what they're calling web sleuths that they will be pressing criminal charges against anyone who is engaged in harassing mm -hmm. here toward anyone involved in or perceived to be involved in this situation mm -hmm. and the spread of misinformation because both have been oh, rampant, rampant. Mm -hmm. absolutely rampant there was a, a a former fbi i think on dr phil this week talking about this case Mm -hmm. And with some conjecture about maybe who did it and who didn't. And, you know, there's a bunch of connections being made to other cases. And it, I don't, we don't know if any of that is true. There's absolutely no, no definitive evidence that any of that is true. And I, I understand that when something like this happens, we want answers. Yeah. You know, we want answers too. We're Idahoans. We've got college kids, you know, we, we want answers too, but. What's going on here is not okay. No. The calling out of people that have been charged with nothing. Right. That just happen to live in that town or work mm -hmm. in that town or be a boyfriend of one of the girls that died mm -hmm. and slamming their names and their likenesses all over the internet and accusing them yeah. of a quadruple homicide. Yeah. The boyfriend of one of the girls has actually had to go into hiding because of the death threats that have been peppered on him. That is ridiculous. He didn't live in the same town and was not even in the same town when it happened. Yeah. Lots of things. There's just, the harassment is unbelievable. And it's not even just by local people. It's not by local people. It's mm -hmm. by people who are able to use the internet, you know, mm -hmm. and see, oh, so-and-so was dating this girl. Well, and, and go crazy with ideas that it was them or, and so forth. Right. And, you know, th the thing is, whether you realize it or not, people in the true crime world do need to be held to ethics, do need to be held to certain expectations. You cannot mm -hmm. just go publicly slamming, shaming, and, you know, sus suspecting and accusing mm -hmm. just anyone of anything. You, you can't. Yeah. And uh, the Moscow Police Department put out this statement. Anyone engaging in threats or harassment, whether in person, online or otherwise, needs to understand that they could be subjecting themselves to criminal charges. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, if you know us and you follow us, that we we don't buy into this stuff. We don't play no. these games. And if something is conjecture or if something is not, you know. A verified we will say that and we mm -hmm. do not release names we do not make accusations we are not the police and neither is any other youtuber no. or podcaster that is the job of the police we report what's going on we don't get involved and this is what's happening and it is wrong mm -hmm. and i think that we as content creators need to call out mm -hmm. just in general to all content creators stop mm -hmm. this shit. yep this is I mean, the same so stuff has been narrow. happening in the Michael Vaughn case. Yes, terribly. Real and, huge oversteps. And things are getting so muddled. And I mean, people are literally doing things that could affect 
the efficacy of prosecution going later on down the road. Like, Mm -hmm. why would you want to screw that up? You know, you're so desperate for views that you're going to make up stuff and threaten people and name names of people who aren't charged with anything. Well, I'm sorry, but you need to get out. Yeah. That's wrong on every level. And have some respect, you know, Mm -hmm. just because this case hasn't been solved in four weeks doesn't mean that it won't be. Right. This is a huge case and it's in a small college town. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's going to take some time. For sure. This is a quadruple homicide. They don't just get solved overnight. But But if you want this case to be solved. Yeah. Quit doing shit that takes the investigators and the police away from their job to have to deal with the mess you're making. Right. And if you, as a podcaster Mm -hmm. or a web sleuth, come up with something that is a credible source, you know the tip line. Yeah. You know. That's where it goes. Not on YouTube. Not making unsubstantiated claims against citizens. That is not okay. No, it isn't. People are going to end up being sued. They're going to get criminal charges for that. Like there's, there mm-hmm. will be consequences for these things. And in the long run, if a true primer, a YouTuber, a content creator, whoever does something to screw up the ability to prosecute the true offender or offenders in this case, then that is a travesty. We want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Mm-hmm. So we just want to stand in solidarity with the Moscow police and mm-hmm. the FBI. And, you know, we're here to add our knowledge as being Idahoans and, you know, being familiar with the place that this has happened and mm-hmm. showing our support for families and support for justice. But getting in the way is the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. So. entirely yeah so we just wanted to say that and you all know if you know us we don't play those games no but there are way too many people playing those games right now and it just it bothers me a lot because well frankly it gives true crime a bad name well yeah it's making true crime look absolutely ridiculous yeah, yeah. and you literally could give yourself long-term criminal consequences as right. a youtuber by doing something like this and it's just right. it's wrong don't do it don't it's not worth it. a few clicks. No, it isn't. And the controversy. And, and all of this conjecture from people who are not affiliated with the investigation, they all need to shut up. They need mm-hmm. to shut up. This stuff, usually this kind of an analysis, happens a lot further down the road. Yep. It's only been four weeks, guys. It's yep. way too soon. Right. Way you too want soon. to do analysis of cases like this? Give it a minute. Yeah. Wait until the police are actually done investigating. Wait until all of the facts have rolled out that you're going to get. Wait for those things, but don't get in the way for God's sake. I mean, mm-hmm. what are people doing? I can't even. I, with it. I don't know. I don't know. And why this case in particular, I don't know that either. Well, that um, and Michael Vaughn. I mean, it started mm-hmm. with Michael Vaughn with people interviewing potential suspects on their shows before the police had even done that. Yeah. Or and calling people out as potential suspects that the police had not named as suspects. Yeah. It's, it's not, not good. Okay. No. Not okay at all. We want no. to be part of justice, not a hindrance to justice. For sure. Yep. So that's my soapbox. <laughs> I like it. All righty. Well, this has been our Tuesday case, our Tuesday episode. So we'll be back tomorrow with a brand new episode. We will be back Wednesday night with case updates and patrons. Keep an eye out. We have a brand new Patreon coming out this week. Uh, It's one of those that I would never be able to put on real YouTube (laughs) or like public YouTube because it's a little too hardcore. But I know you guys can handle it and you'll be supremely interested in it probably so there you go Mm -hmm. be sure to like share follow do your thing uh let us know what you think are we wrong what do you think what what kind of ethics do you think that true crimers should be following i'm I'm curious to know or or if any what what do you Mm -hmm. think i i'm always open for some dialogue and if you think that uh we're wrong or right or whatever let's talk about it respectfully yeah let's go there all righty guys well this has been yet another edition of the true crime squad take care and have a great day bye everybody